Hello, in this video I'm going to show you a program that comes included in Advanced System Care's toolbox called IOBIT System Control. The system control feature allows you to customize your operating system to fit you or another user's needs. And in Advanced System Care's toolbox, it's right here under control, so I'm going to click on it. And it begins by opening to the general settings. Under desktop, you can select what shortcuts you want to have on the desktop. Right now, the only one I have selected is Recycle Bin. You can also set the home page for Internet Explorer, and you can set how many days you want to keep your browsing history. If you don't have a specific home page to select, you can always click on the Use Blank Page button here. And below that, you can also set Firefox's home page, which mine's set at google.com. In the Function tab, you can select what devices you want to autoplay. You can autoplay removable disks, and you can autoplay CD or DV drives. I typically would have both of these checked. You can adjust the cursor width, which I'm going to leave where it is. And you also could activate key combinations. Under security, you have the option to turn on Windows Security Center, turn on Windows Firewall, and turn on Windows Automatic Updates. I have all of them checked. Down below, there's a drop-down menu. You can download and install updates at a scheduled time. Use Windows default settings. Notify me before downloading updates. Notify me before auto-downloading and installing updates. And I'm going to leave download and install updates at a scheduled time. And now I'm going to go to the Others tab. Under System Failure, you can tell the system what to do when an error does occur. You can automatically restart or display error information, which is the blue screen. You can specify whether fonts should be smooth to enhance readability. And in the drop-down menu, you have Clear Type, No Smoothing, and Standard Font Smoothing. Under Taskbar, you can specify the location of the minimized window. Next, I'm going to go to File Types. Here, you can have the Open Command Prompt Here option display in the Context menu. Under Files and Folders, you can choose the entries you want to be shown in the Context menu of Files and Folders. And again, this is the right-click menu, so when you right-click, you have the options to send to, copy to folder, move to folder, encrypt or decrypt. And down below, it says Display New Submenus in the Context menu for the Desktop and Folder, and we'll leave that checked. You can also return to Default Settings. Under Opening Files, you can customize Windows Actions when double-clicking on an unknown file type. And right now, mine's ticked to show the Open With dialog. Under Standard Applications for Files Without Extensions, you can customize Windows Actions when double-clicking on a file without extensions. And again, down below, you can return to Default Settings. Under the Advanced tab, you can specify whether new shortcut names should be automatically preceded by Shortcut 2. So if I went to the Start menu, and then went to Documents, and then in Documents, right-click on a folder, uh, select Create Shortcut, and then right here where it says Shortcut, this would eliminate it saying Shortcut underneath it. Under Folder Types, you can specify the way folder windows and contents of folders are to be displayed. Under Window, you can always show the menu bar. You can restore the folder window that was opened in the last login, and you can also select to show the detailed information bar. You can save view settings for every folder, and you can also select the number of saved folders to view. Under the List tab, you can select how to arrange icons. You can sort alphabetically, or you can sort numerically and alphabetically. Under Pop-up with detailed information, you can show pop-up above files and desktop elements, or you can have it display content information in a pop-up above the folder. Under Encrypted and Compressed Elements, you can show encrypted and compressed elements in other colors. And right now, mine's set to green. You can click the Change button to change the color, and you can also click on Default Settings to return to the original settings. Under Selection, you can customize the colors for special files and effects. Under Simply Click to Open, you can choose the color to highlight items when the mouse pointer is positioned over them. And in order to use this option, single click to open an item must be activated in the folder options in Windows Explorer. And right now the hot tracking color is blue. Again, I could change that if I wanted to. Under Selection, you can add checkbox for selected items. Under the Advanced tab, under Desktop, you can have what shortcuts to have placed on the desktop. And if I were to click Settings, you have the option of My Computer, Administrative Tools, Recycle Bin, and Network Connections. You can have the drives and special folders installed shown in My Computer. Next, I'm going to go to the Start Menu options. Under the General tab, you can select the menu speed. You can specify the delay, which is used when pointing at a menu before the submenu is open. And you have two options, Open Menu only via mouse click, or Open Menus automatically when pointing at them. Under Last Used, 
This will show your recently used files and you can select the save and display list of recently used files and then you can select the number of files to be shown in the menu. Under shortcuts, here you can move and edit shortcuts. You can customize the start menu by adding entries, removing unwanted entries, or rearranging them. You have a checkbox here to enable moving shortcuts by dragging and dropping and editing via the context menu. Next I'm going to go to the taskbar. Under flashing buttons while typing, activated windows are indicated and focused by a flashing taskbar button. And then you can check the box to enable flashing taskbar buttons. Under general, you can set the time windows should be focused after the last key has been pressed. And then under flashing speed, you can customize the flashing frequency of a taskbar button to indicate a change. Under button appearance, you can specify whether the shortcuts on the taskbar should be animated. Under grouping, the grouping of similar items means the buttons belonging to the same program will be collapsed into a single button. And you can select to have group similar taskbar buttons. Group most rarely used programs first. And then you can set the number of programs to group. Under minimized windows, you can customize how to position and organize the windows that are not shown in the taskbar. And under position and alignment, you can customize the location of the title bars of minimized windows that are not shown on the taskbar. And you can align them side by side or use the cascading effect. Under position, you have left or right, bottom or top. Under advanced, you can customize the general display and behavior options for the taskbar and notification area. And under system tray, says configure the settings for system tray here. Show system tray and show balloons in the system tray. Next, I'm going to go to Internet Explorer. Here you can set the home page for Internet Explorer. Because I don't use Internet Explorer, I'm not even going to bother. You can also specify how many days you want to keep your browsing history under view. You can customize the title of Internet Explorer. Under Favorites, you can hide the unwanted folders for the Internet Explorer Favorites. And under Menu, you can customize whether the function of opening a new window or opening a new tab shows in the Internet Explorer File submenu. And you can select to show the new window or show the new tab. Under Mozilla Firefox, you can enable or disable Blink New Tab. You can customize the way error messages are displayed, and you can display error messages in a window, or you can display error messages as a web page. Here you can set the home page of Firefox, and mine's already set to Google.com. Under Usage, you can have it auto-complete your entry when you're searching on the Internet. Under Menu Speed, you can customize the speed of cascading menus. You can use Windows default settings. Open menu only by mouse click, and here you can set the delay time. Under pop-up windows, you can customize whether a website is permitted to open normal. You have the option to do not open links in a window. Open links as follows, and then your options are in the same tab or window as a link, or in a new tab. You can also select how JavaScript is used. Under tabs, you can customize the position of the close button. Under minimum width, you can set the minimum tab width. Under information, you can change the name and company name of the current registered user. You can define the default data that should be used by Windows installers for current users. Under common dialogs, you can customize the appearance of the common dialogs for opening and saving files. You can make it easier to select a file by the filing settings. You can show a combo box with recently frequently used programs, and you can autofill with most similar entries. Under folder navigation, you can select to show the back button, and you can also show place bars on the left side. Under Command Prompt, you can configure the settings for the appearance and behavior of the command prompt. Here you can set the background color and the font color. Under Input Options, you can swap your right and left mouse buttons. You can have your right click be your left click and your left click be your right click, if that makes sense. Under Set Pointer Automatically, you can specify the action when you turn the scroll wheel one notch. You can have it not scroll at all. Scroll one screen page or scroll by so many lines at a time. You can select to move the mouse pointer to default position automatically. I'm going to leave that unchecked. Under mouse sensitivity, here you can specify mouse sensitivity during click and drag operations. Under double clicking and dragging, you can set the threshold and the double clicking tolerance. Under hover effect, you can select the hover time and the movement tolerance. And now I'm going to go to keyboard. Here you can configure the settings that affect how the computer is operated with the keyboard. At first we have flashing cursor, and right now it's set to activating flashing cursor. You can adjust the cursor width. And you can also activate key combinations under network. 
You can configure settings for displaying shares in my network places. Under general, there's an option to search network for printer or search network for shared resources automatically and you can check both of them, one of them or none of them. Under security, you can hide this computer in the network places of the computer or you can enable administrative shares. In the advanced tab, you can enable or disable plug and play. You can reserve bandwidth for important applications and you can adjust the bandwidth limit. Under internet, you can specify whether existing dial-up connections should be left active when a user logs off so that the other users can use them. You can select to always keep dial-up connections at log off or ask at log off. Under Windows Firewall, you can enable the firewall. Next, under Driver, you can have the computer warn you when you're getting low on disk space. And under Autoplay, you can activate or deactivate the Windows monitor when a new CD is inserted into your CD drive. In other words, when you insert the CD, it will automatically play. Under the Memory Management tab, it says here are settings for managing the physical and virtual memory of your system. Under Virtual Memory, it says the system performance can be improved by disabling driver and core paging on computers with 256 megabytes of memory or more. And the two options are page as needed and always keep in memory. Under Page File, it says if you would like to overwrite the paging file with zeros at shutdown to protect your privacy, please tick this option. You can customize the way that Windows uses physical memory according to your needs. And then under memory usage, you can set how much more memory should be reserved for programs or for the system cache. You can reserve it for programs or you can reserve it for system cache. Next, under the security, I'm going to go to user logon. Under the general settings, you can hide the name of the last user, press Control Alt Delete together to log on, and show the shutdown button on the logon screen. Under automatic logon, you can select what user accounts would log on automatically. Down below it, it says, attention, this password is stored in non-encrypted form in the registry. So you want to be very careful when you're using this one. Under selection, you can prevent skipping the logon procedure by pressing the shift key. And you can automatically log on after log off. And under messages, you can display a message before the user logs on. And you can also have it show a detailed status message during the log on or log off process. Next, I'm going to go to Security Center. Here you can enable or disable Windows Security Center. Under Security Center, you can specify whether you see a warning balloon when a security check fails. And your options are warn of non-installed virus scanner, warn of non-installed firewall, or warn of outdated security software. Under Advanced, you can define the time the screensaver has to be activated before the password is requested. Now I'm going to go to Privacy. Under Privacy, you can block executable attachments to protect your computer from viruses. You can automatically download and install Windows updates. And on the drop-down menu, you can use Windows default settings, notify before downloading updates, notify me before auto-downloading and installing updates. Next, I'm going to go to the Clean Traces. Here, you can set special rules to remove the traces of the documents you're working with and your internet surfing. You can have it clear your history at log off. Under Empty Internet Explorer Cache, it says if you would like to empty the Internet Explorer Cache automatically when the browser is closed, please tick this option. Next, under Internet Explorer, here you can configure the Internet Explorer security settings that relate to your privacy. Under Integrated Windows Authentication, it says Internet Explorer tries to log into protected Internet pages using Windows Authentication automatically, and you could disable that if you wanted to. Under Internet Explorer Updates, you have the option to disable checking for updates. Next, under Others, I'm going to go to Animations and Effects. Under Effects, you can select the settings to be used when displaying and using user elements. And then under visual effect settings, you can display selection rectangle with color background, show window contents while dragging, show color shading and title bar, show mouse pointer shadow, use a background image for each folder type, use drop shadow for icon labels on the desktop. And under behavior settings, you can show tool tips and the title bar buttons. You can reset to default settings, or you can adjust your computer for best performance or best appearance. Now I'm going to go to animation. You can select the animation you want to be applied for actions in Windows and List. Under Window and Message Animations, you can animate Windows when maximizing and minimizing. And you can also use the following animation with Toolkit. And in the drop-down menu, you either have Fade Effect or Roll-Up Effect. Under Animation of Elements, you have Animation List View and Tree View, Slide Open Combo Boxes, and Smooth Scroll List Boxes. Under Menu Appearance, you can specify the way context menu and application default menus should look and behave. And under animation of elements, you can show flat menus and show shadows under menus. Under windows and message animation, you can select to have menu items fade out after clicking. 
and you also have display effects you have fade effect and scroll effect and then down below of course you can revert to default settings and you can also adjust for best performance under font smoothing you have clear type no smoothing or standard font smoothing and last is start and maintenance under delay for disk scan it says if the system shut down abnormally a hard disk scan will be performed at the next startup so in other words if the system does shut down abnormally it will run a check disk at next startup and you can also enable defragmenting at boot time under desktop and taskbar you can configure settings that may affect the stability of the desktop and taskbar and then under desktop and taskbar is a separate process it says the stability of the system could be increased by executing the desktop and taskbar in a separate process when the explorer crashes so you have two different options you can execute desktop and taskbar within explorer processes and you can execute desktop and taskbars in a separate process under restart desktop and taskbar you can have it automatically restart the desktop and taskbar after errors and then under the errors tab you can select to have the operating system play a sound when an error occurs and then you can also tell the operating system what to do when an error does occur you can restart the system automatically or show an error message in blue screen and you also have the option to record events in the system log and as always you can always revert back to the default settings and that's iobit system control it's loaded with many features and options to customize your operating system thank you for watching have a great day